Welcome to part two of my first YouTube series, The Gaunt's Ghost Conversions, Cloaks and Bases. Here are five examples of my Tanith Regiment. In this video I will show you two examples of how I make green stuff cloaks, and at the very end talk about basing the regiment. In this official artwork you can see a snapshot of how the regiment wear their cloaks. They are all very different and I hope to achieve a similar look with this project. So let's make some cloaks. First I make a rectangle of green stuff and begin tearing pieces off until I am happy I have created something that would fit in on a battlefield of the 41st millennium. I use a piece of plastic, in this case an old record sleeve, to help reduce fingerprints whilst handling the green stuff. Having some water on hand prevents it from sticking as much. Once I have a piece I like, I place it over the shoulder, making sure to have the piece that was in contact with the plastic facing outwards and then I start sculpting with a tool from Games Workshop. Make sure to keep your tools a little wet, this prevents them from sticking to the green stuff. My goal here is to have the cloak sweeping over towards the opposite side of the miniature. Here I'm trying to create some more folds in the fabric. Once I am happy with the first piece, I move on to the second piece that goes over the other shoulder. I take a piece I had torn off before and place it over the shoulder preferably hanging straight down and not towards the other shoulder as much. In this case, I fold it whilst it's on the mini, but in the next example, I fold it whilst it's off the mini while on the plastic. I think this is much easier than what I did in this example. I fold it because I feel it gives the cloak more depth, more character. I try to create motion by flicking the bottom up as if it was caught by a gust of wind. Something I have noticed while sculpting these first five, some lessons I've learned. Once the green stuff is on the mini, and unless I totally mess something up, it stays on there. I move it around as best I can to create something unique in the process. I could spend hours trying to get it just right, only again to feel it's not perfect. This is okay. This is art. We will always improve with each mini we create. I start to use other tools where I need thinner lines on the cloak. On these ordinary Tanith Troopers, I am not modelling hoods. This is something I am going to save for the dedicated scout or sniper squads, giving the units some different characters so they can be easily identified on the battlefield. I just quickly adjust a previous sculpt as I wasn't quite happy. That particular sculpt is Sergeant Hasker. So whilst this next example plays, I'm going to do some admin. Thanks for sticking with me this long. I'm going to again talk about the project a little bit before we end this video, basing the miniatures. This is quite an extensive project for me, and it's evolving every day. But the main goal of this channel is to take you all along on a journey as I create the ghosts. Starting at first and only, and perhaps ending with the Anarch. Along the way, we will meet other characters, allied to the ghosts and a few that aren't. I would like to model these also. The Narmenians, the Saint, the Freedom Fighters of Garen, even some Astartes, and at some point perhaps even some enemies. But before I get too ahead of myself, what can you expect in the near future from me? Well next on the list is painting some of these ghosts. I've already begun to paint some. The ones you will see me paint in this first five are Seglan Val, Merton Fagor, and Try Again Bragg. Keep an eye on this channel if you want to see that. Once they are complete, I'll move on to Ghost Maker and begin a similar process as I build a further squad of ghosts. Anyway, uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to this channel, or give me a thumbs up if you want to see more of the ghost journey. Here, I use superglue to attach a straight silver to each model's leg, adding an essential part of a ghost's kit. I then do something I have seen other creators do, and that is to roll a very thin sausage of green stuff out, then flatten it with a toothpick and cut a piece to wrap around the leg as a bootstrap for a knife. Adding these small touches, I feel, really enhance the character of the ghosts. Now for the bases. This is the final test base that I settled on. I went with a base that the ghosts are quite familiar with. 
A mud-strewn battlefield covered in pools of fetid water, debris from destroyed battlements, and the odd tuft of alien shrub. A battlefield not unlike Fortis Binary, Black Shard, Monthax, X Cardinal, or Garen. I use a technical paint from Games Workshop called Sterler Mud to use on my bases for the regiment. I use quite a thick layer. This is just one of the ways I'm trying to create some character differences between each mini. Another thing to note, if you're going to stick your minis on after making your bases, is that there may be a slight gap where the foot sits on top of the technical paint. I just use a toothpick and more of the texture paint to cover this up and I think it actually creates a better story for the miniature. Here are the first five ghosts primed in black and zenithal primed in white. Note on zenithal priming. Zenithal priming with rattle cans is not ideal, but it is all I have for now. Here is Val, Blaine, Merin, Fagor and Haska. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.